Hello, and welcome again to another uh, session of uh, Song Lovers Online. We're up to 18. Can you believe that? Oh, I can't believe that. I can't that. either. My goodness. Yeah. We only we thought we were going to do this three or four times, didn't we? I know. Back and in the day. we're still doing it. Here we are. So, here's our first hymn, and you can find the notes on the PDF, which is, uh, which is online. The, this is number 82, Just When I Need Him. William Poole. I want to say we've seen William Poole before. I think we have. American, he became a Methodist minister and was, no, we haven't, because this was interesting, oh. superintendent of the Anti-Saloon League of oh. Delaware. Oh, <laughs> goodness. I didn't know, I mean, I had an idea, but I didn't know what an Anti-Saloon League was. Apparently, it's still going. It's not called Anti-Saloon League. It's got something in its name about alcohol dependence. Okay. But back then, it was absolutely anti-saloons, anti-alcohol. This is prohibition was, on, on steroids, mm -hmm. even before. And then once prohibition was mm -hmm. repealed, boy, they just did not have a good day of them. <laughs> so this guy, he wrote hymns as a diversion from his ministerial duties. And the tune, we know this guy, Charles Gabriel. Um, he was, his family was on a farm in Iowa, played the reed organ whenever neighbors and That's people right. came by. Mm -hmm. Editor for the Road Heaver, the Hope, and the EOXL Publishing Companies. Yes. So, first and fourth? First and fourth. All right. Oh, I just looked at the wrong one. I'm at 82 right there. You're, we're doing 82 right now. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so number two is number 87 in the, in the book, and it's entitled More Love to Thee, O Christ, uh, written by a woman by the name of Elizabeth P. Prentice, who was born in Portland, Maine, into a Congregationalist pastor's family. And after her father's death in 1827, the family moved to New York City. And in 1831, Elizabeth joined the Bleecker Street Presbyterian Church. So oh. she went from being a Congregationalist to a Presbyterian. To a Presbyterian, yeah. Apparently she didn't like that Congregationalist. Evidently not. So she married George Prentice in 1845, and he became the pastor of Mercer Street Presbyterian Church in New York City. And she became a well-known author and hymn writer. So anyway, this text was composed as a prayer sometime around 1856 as a prayer during a time of physical and mental distress. That fits right in for today, doesn't it? It sure does, it sure does. So there was something about that that I was reading about her, that not only was, was she had several periods of really serious health problems, but also they had six children and oh only four survived infancy. Oh my. So they think that she wrote this 
right after two of the kids died, so. That could be. Yeah. Anyway, she kept this to herself for, for quite a few years until she let it out. So it must have been a very personal thing. Yeah. So anyway, the uh, composer is William Doan, and we've seen him before. Like uh, this guy. <laughs> this guy, he, yeah. He, uh, he was an inventor, a manufacturer, a philanthropist, choir director, composer, and collector. He was the one that collected the musical manuscripts. Yeah, had manuscripts yeah. of Handel and Beethoven Handel and in his personal Beethoven. collection. Darn, I wish, I wish, I would really like to know where that all went. <laughs> probably, Would you? probably whatever the university he supports. I hope so. I hope it went to the university, not the dustbin. <laughs> yeah, okay. <no kidding. clears throat> Although, didn't they find works of J.S. Bach wrapping fish? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you know well, here's the paper. Let's put the fish in it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, one and three. That's good. Here's your intro. And next is number 90, No, Not One. Johnson Oatman, we've seen Mr. Oatman. He was a gentleman who worked in his father's uh, mercantile business, later became quite successful in the life insurance business, but also as a sideline, wrote him texts. There you go. And here's the composer, <laughs> we've not seen him, George Hug. He's American. At age 12, he was a choir master for the Presbyterian Church in Berlin, New Jersey. At 12 that years old? 12. At 12? Wow. Ah, I used to teach 12 year olds. I, know. Mm. I wonder if he could reach the pedals. They must have been a lot different back then. Really? At the age of 14, he wrote his first song, which was called Walk in the Light. And throughout his life, he was choir, mar uh, choir master for three Presbyterian I can't talk. Three Presbyterian churches in Philadelphia. And he wrote more than 2,000 works. Wow. Prolific? Yeah. Here it is. There's. No, not one. Yes, no, not one, so we'll do two verses. One and five? Mm -hmm. That's good.
So this is number 94, and we're going to change things up a little bit. I'm going to sing it first, all three verses, uh, and then, then I'm going to talk about it. And I think you'll understand why. to do that first is because the hymn tune was so different from what's in this hymn book that it started my wheels turning up here. First of all, the, um, the lady who wrote the text, Oh Holy Savior, Charlotte Elliott, uh, we've seen her before, haven't we? Yeah, we have. Uh, yeah. Just as I am with that one, please. That's right. That was exactly that yeah. we've done that one. She's, anyway, to review, she's English poet, hymn writer, editor. She was always unsure of her relationship with Christ. So many of her 150 hymn texts reflect that. And just like you said, she's probably best known for Just As I Am Without One Plea. And you can certainly see that uncertainty here in the hymn text. Hymn text. But what really got my attention was the tune. Ulysses Elam is credited for writing this tune, and as your PDF says, no information is available for this composer. Because I couldn't find nothing about it. <laughs> so, I had some time that I didn't have to do anything else, and I thought, hmm, that's really intriguing, because this hymn tune struck me as either being an African-American spiritual or an endogenous Indian tune. It just, it just was so different. So I started doing some research. And I found, I found out, first of all, that there's truth. There is very, very little about this person. However, I did find out he was born in January of 1894. And then a further deep, deep, deep dive uh, yielded up a dissertation, a, a 2018 dissertation by a student at Florida State University who is doing his dissertation on Nathaniel Dett, who is the person who arranged this. And sure enough, on page 159 in the dissertation, there was a reference to this gentleman and to this hymn tune. I was hmm. hoping that there would be a lot more, but there wasn't. Yeah. However, Det was a music teacher at How at then called Howard Institute in oh, no Hampton Institute in Hampton, Virginia, which then became Hampton University, and it is a historical black college. So, and he mentions in that dissertation that, that uh, this uh, Elam, Ulysses Elam, lived in the area. So I'm thinking that Ulysses Elam was an African American who might have been a student of Nathaniel Dent's at the at Hampton Institute, now University. Um, and that's all I got. And then Nathaniel Dent arranged it for in the format that we have now, yeah. so the harmonization and all, he did that. Yeah, and he was a very well-known um, composer at the time. He mm -hmm. wrote a whole bunch of, of um, piano music, choral music. He was inspired by Dvorak to take the spiritual form yeah. and work it into his compositions. 
So it's really kind of interesting. If you have the time, Google Nathaniel Det, uh, D-E-T-T, -T, uh, and you'll find a whole bunch of stuff about him. It's fascinating. Way back when I was a young piano student, my professor gave me a piece of Nathaniel Det. I think it was called uh, Dance in the Bottoms. Or something. Yeah. And it was a really cool piece. I wish I could remember how it goes now, but it was yeah. cool. Oh, neat. It's fun. I didn't okay. know anything about Nathaniel Dead except that he wrote that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. good. And here's our last one for today, number 109, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And I think most people know this tune, I think people know this text. If you don't know much about Mr. Scriven, he was born in Ireland, his father was a captain in the Royal Marines. He had poor health, so he didn't get to go into the military. Mm. He studied at Trinity College. The day before his wedding, his oh. fiance drowned. Oh, heavens. <laughs> so he moved to Canada. <laughs> Is that what you do when your fiance drowns? Evidently, you go to Canada. Canada. His second fiance became sick, oh and God. she also died suddenly before their wedding. He was a member of the Plymouth Brethren, and he tried to do what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount. He gave away his property, and he did menial work for the handicapped and for the poor. I like this. He was called the man who sawed wood for widows and sick people who were unable to pay. Because <laughs> that's what he did. He was depressed that his own poor health and lack of money might make him a burden on society. So he actually drowned in Rice Lake in Canada, okay. and it's uncle unclear whether it was an accident or a suicide. Oof. Goodness. He wrote this in Canada in 1885. Apparently he wanted to comfort his sick mother in Dublin, although it might also have been related to the death of his second fiance. And the tune is Converse, named for Charles Converse, born in Massachusetts. I would like to someday, someday be able to speak with this guy. Yeah. Went to Leipzig, he studied law, mm -hmm. philosophy, music theory, and composition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he became a lawyer in Erie, Pennsylvania. He also headed up the Burdetta Organ Company. And I don't know anything oh. about the Burdetta Organ I don't know if they mm -hmm. did um, reed organs or if they were pipe organs or what. His pen name was Karl Reden, which was a German form of his name. Mm -hmm. Reden means to speak or converse. How about that? And this tune, like many tunes, has different names. So other tune, uh, names for this tune are Eerie, Friendship, and What a Friend. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Uh, one and three? One and three. Thank you for joining us again. This is, uh, we had fun doing this one. Yes. Um, yeah. And you'll look forward to another one next week, which will be great. We'll do another five hymns. Maybe next week we should do some more of the spirituals that are in there. What do you think? Okay, that would be great. Yeah. And then we wouldn't do so much talking. Yeah. Maybe we could do six or seven spirituals because there's sure. not a lot to say about spirituals. Sounds good. Let's just... do it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Good. Thank you.
Peace, everyone.